Okay, so the first step is to make sure that here we are in Outlook and that your appointments or tasks are being accounted for by assigning them a category. Now I've done many of them here already. Some counselors like to do this as they go and others might wait till the end of the week to go back and then kind of reflect on what they've done and uh, fix their calendar up. Uh, so let's see which of the ones we have not done yet. We've got one here called small group counseling. So I, I was doing small group counseling at that point. There's a couple of ways to do this. One is I can highlight the appointment and then go up here to click categorize. Now I'm noticing small group counseling is not in my list. It's probably because I have too many categories. So I'm going to hit all categories and then look for it this way as I scroll down. There it is. So I hit OK here. Now, by the way, I can actually uh, do several appointments at the same time. So, for instance, I see a couple more small group counseling here. By holding the control key down, I can select multiple appointments, then right-click, choose Categorize, and then look for that category. Now, I'm going to click All Categories again because I don't see it, and it's right down there on the bottom. So now I hit OK, and all three appointments have just been categorized. Uh, so again, you can actually click on the appointment and use the Categorize button above, or you can right-click and click on Categorize and then uh, do it that way. Now I've got this meeting here called Leadership Team Meeting. That could probably go under System Support. Uh, you've got to choose your categories carefully. But I want to really know how much time I'm spending in those leadership team meetings. So I go to right click here and I go to categorize and I don't believe that I have a category set up for that. So for demonstration purposes, let's create one. I'm going to go to all categories and then from here I can, by the way, rename the ones I have. I can delete them or I can create a new one. Let's call this leadership team meetings. Okay. I can assign it a color and I think it's giving me, let's see, it's giving me a little bit of a light orange. Let's choose yellow, something that we haven't done. And then, uh, by the way, I can also uh, assign it a shortcut key. So if I have a lot of those meetings, I can say that anytime I highlight the meeting and click on Control F2 or press Control F2, that will categorize it. Uh, but I'm not going to do that at this point. I hit OK. So now I've got one called Leadership Team Meeting. And uh, let's see, I know there was one other here, so I can click on this guy, click on Categorize, and there it is. All right, so I've done many of them. Let's do one more. Uh, small group counseling, again, it's kind of hidden. So let's scroll down, there it is, and we hit OK. So once I've categorized my meetings, um, then it's time to go to the next step, step number two. From here, we need to export the calendar into Excel. And the way we do that in version 2010 is we click on File, we click on Open, and then we click on Import Export. And then from here, we're going to export to a file, click on Next. We want to choose Microsoft Excel. That's what we're doing. We're exporting our Outlook calendar data to Excel. We're going to hit on Next. I'm going to make sure that the right calendar, I have two calendars here, I'm using the demo calendar, uh, is highlighted. It should be if that's what you were on. I'm going to click on Next. Um, and I can either browse for a location to save this file or, uh, as you can see, I've done this before, so I'm going to use the title there, that I, the name of the file that I used before, Demo Calendar Export. You can name it whatever you want. I'm going to click on Next. And from here, we're going to just go ahead and click on Finish, although we're not quite finished yet. From here now, we've got to tell it what range of dates to export. You can do a day, you can do a week, you can do a whole year. We're just going to concentrate on this week that we've been working on, which starts November 5th and goes until November 11th, actually. Yep, that's right, November 11th. Okay. Um, so we're going to say OK, 
and it just exported my appointments to Excel. So let's go get that file. I open up Excel. Okay, I remembered that I saved that file in a folder called temp. So we're going to go get it there. And there it is. So we open it. And this is what the data looks like. What you'll also notice here is column O is the categories column. And I can already tell very quickly that I missed some of my appointments. Now at this point you can go back and you can do this in Outlook and then re-export this or you can just simply kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, tiers, the, the add-in that we're using, will actually uh, turn these into a category called uncategorized if you forget. So here we are. This is what that week looks like in my calendar. The last step now is to analyze the results using our tier add-in. So from here, I go to my add-ins. There it is. It comes up as time elapsed graph. I click on it. Would you like to create a time elapsed graph? Yes. And within a matter of a couple of seconds, depending on how much data you have, it gives you a graph of the data. Now you can see this one's actually not too bad. Um, I've got a lot of categories and so if this works for you that's great. If it doesn't then uh, you can always change it to a different kind of a, a chart by clicking on change chart type and using something that might be a little less congested. Let's try a bar chart and if we go in here and actually make it a lot bigger, this one could work for us maybe a little bit better. Let's see, I'm trying to move it. There we go. All right. And let's see if we kind of open it up a little bit, that might work a little bit better. Not quite sure. Anyway, you can experiment with this and decide which kind of chart you want um, so that you can really uh, have a nice looking, clean looking chart. Uh, you can see I'm still moving some things around uh, as I want to uh, kind of clean this up a little bit and make it a little bit easier to read. Okay, from here I might even kind of start making it uh, using uh, uh, Excel's little uh, chart tools to kind of pick some formatting that works best. And, uh, and I've got my chart. Also, what you'll notice down here when you click on Graph Data, okay, go to the bottom of Excel, you'll see a tab called Graph Data. What you'll notice is that the add-in also extracts the data and creates a table for you. So if you prefer to use this table instead of a graph or use both in one of your reports, uh, you can certainly do that. And that's tiers in a nutshell.